this lecture we're going to really talk about the derivation for the subthreshold device and actually how do you get how do you get the IV equation? Because we will typically talk about well there's a band diagram here and this will basically be from the source, the surface potential to the drain. And very easily we will get expressions like you see at the bottom for the source current. That'll be an exponential function of the gate voltage, the source voltage, gate voltage, and drain voltage. And very quickly we'll say, well, it's pretty much very similar to what the barrier on this side is, and that's one exponential, and the barrier on this side, and that gives you the other exponential, and we'll just kind of be able to proceed. And once you see it, it becomes very straightforward. But it's really important to kind of walk through this carefully to make sure that this is, this is understood every time we talk about it, because there's a couple assumptions that are made, very straightforward assumptions, but things you want to understand. So again, we start with a band diagram. This kind of comes directly by looking at the electro electrostatics, looking right through the channel region. We know that it's going to be flat in this region here in the channel, because basically we've assumed that it pretty much doesn't have much potential. That's actually by definition of it being subthreshold, the current basically not affecting the electrostatics. And we're going to be talking about electrons starting from the source for this NFET going, you know, having to rise above the source of channel potential, this via C and getting up and over into this side. Similarly, you'd have electrons trying to get up from drain to the channel through this potential, drain to channel potential on this side. Um, the difference in source and drain voltage will be it's just basically the difference of these two potentials. Okay. So, from this we can now continue to talk through what these devices would look like. Um, and continue to say, well, how do, I, how do I think about it? Well, I do have an exponential here on the source side, and I have an exponential here on the drain side. And one of the first things I would imagine is that the amount of carriers that, that manage to reach the edge of the source is going to be an exponentially decreasing value of the height of the source of channel potential. So I imagine that number is going to be proportional to the source of channel potential. The drain side will be similar. The amount of charge I have there is also going to be in a similar case, and it's also going to be exponential. Not to terribly surprising. And again, I can say the source of channel potential is just going to be source minus service potential, which is kappa Vg, um, and some other constants. And then drain to channel potential is the drain voltage minus psi, which again is also kappa Vg plus, you know, with some constants in there as well. And so what I have here is I actually have the source charge and I have the drain charge on both edges of my, of my device. Now the question is, I have, the, I have the boundary conditions. Now the question is, how does the rest of it look? Because I'm going to care about a number of questions here. One of which is going to be, well, what is the, how does the charge look like through the rest of the device? And this is where you get back to what is just my typical um, equation that I would look at, standard sort of um, model for charge in a channel. And if I'm looking at things in equilibrium, the change in charge of time is zero. I have no generation or recombination of carriers in the channel at all, so there's not really anything that's being created there. So both of those go to zero. And so what I'm left with is this very interesting function, which is basically I have, you know, basically there's just diffusion constant, and then the second diffusion of the, of the change in charge with position equaling to zero. Well, that's actually a pretty easy differential equation to solve. In fact, the solution to that has to be a linear function of some constant a times x plus some constant b. And you think, oh, okay, so it's a straight line. Not surprising from source to drain, I just draw a straight line. And in fact, effectively, that's what you're going to see here. Um, and so you're thinking, okay, that's really good. So now I've got the charge all the way through. Well, how do I compute current? Well, current is going to be, if I look at current density, it's going to be Q times diffusion constant times the change of N over the change of X. Remember, by the way, this has to be diffusion current. Because if the potential is zero, right, and the band picture tells you potential, tells you volt, it's related to voltage, right? This is negative, you know, basically this electron potential. So it's, you know, increasing negative potential is up, increasing potential is down. <laughs> and what you'll find is then you can actually go, well, I know it has to be derivative of it, the derivative of a straight line is, after all, a constant, whichever that slope of that line is. And so in this case, it turns out to be Q times that constant, d sub n, times the, times the charge of the source minus the charge of the drain over the effective length. Now, this is the effective length that I'm integrating over, not the total length, because the depletion regions do eat into this a little bit. 
but this is what I get for that difference. And so I know that there's going to be a number of constants in the front in terms of area and so forth, but it's going to be just the difference of those two terms. So when I look at that, it's going to be just the difference of this exponential minus this exponential. And I already know what those terms are. So substituting in, these are the terms I get. I did a small offset here, where, and I put the constant here, which I actually called my current to threshold, because I decided to reference it to threshold. And then I changed by the threshold voltage. Also notice that it's the gate voltage minus threshold voltage. That's all in kappa, okay, on both sides. Uh, it is not VGS minus threshold voltage. That would actually get you the wrong behavior. Uh, and so just something to be aware of. But it, now, once you look at this equation, and you've gone through this derivation, it's pretty clear you look at this band picture, and almost immediately you go, well, clearly by inspection I go from here to this equation. Well, this kind of helps get you a couple of the other steps in between that's worth actually understanding. And then from here, now you can begin to use this equation and do different forms of it, but you also have enough knowledge of the physics to begin to continue iterating with, the, with these approaches.